In this video, we are going to do one machine learning project which is used to recommend the movies based on the collaborative filtering. I think you all know about the filtering and recommendation techniques in general. But if you don't know about that, then let me give the short explanation about that first. If you already aware about the types of recommendation topics, then you can skip the video using timestamps that I mentioned here. So before skipping the content, please like, share, comment and subscribe. It will motivate me to produce more useful contents in Python and data science. Okay, so let's get started. The recommendations are divided into two types. First one is the content based recommendation. I will tell you in a simple concept so you can easily understand what exactly the content based recommendation is. So the content based recommendation name itself giving the meaning of whole definition. Suppose if you are watching Netflix and your favorite show is Witcher and if I ask what are the things you liked in the series, you will definitely give some of your favorite insights about the series. Now I will collect those insights from viewers about the series and then I recommend you to watch the Game of Thrones. Because you watch Witcher, so the Witcher and Game of Thrones is pretty much in a same style. So definitely you will like the Game of Thrones. Okay, so this is what the content based recommendation is. So you can easily understand the concept of content based recommendation here with this above example. So moreover, it is simply work like if you are a fan of particular actor, then the machine will consider as one feature and it will recommend you the particular actor movies. So this is what the content based recommendation is. Here your favorite things about the movies are considered as features. So based on those features, it will recommend you the contents. So just note on this step, this step is very important for understanding of content based recommendation. Second one is collaborative filtering. Collaborative filtering is simply like based on many users past interactions. The collaborative filtering model doesn't give the importance to the features that the user like. Instead of collecting features, it will collect the past purchases from different users and it will recommend a similar kind of product to the new users. Let me give you one beautiful example about the collaborative filtering. Suppose you are in India and during the Diwali times, here a lot of people purchase new products. Collaborative method will record the purchases from different people from different cities. And if you visit the e-commerce site, it will recommend you the products which are sold most in India. It is a test case scenario only, but in general, it will work like if many people shows interest to particular product, then, then this algorithm recommend you to that product. This is the primary difference between the content based recommendation and collaborative based recommendation. By the way, in this video, I'm going to write some code and explain the mathematical equations behind the collaborative filtering model using Python. For performing the collaborative recommendation in Python, you need to install one library, which is called Turi Create. Turi Create is a machine learning, deep learning and computer vision library in Python. It is one of the few libraries in Python that support multiple artificial intelligence works. So I recently discovered this library and it is a wonderful distribution for Python ecosystem. I recommend you to use this library for performing collaborative recommendation things. One of the disadvantage of this library is it use only S frame data frames. As of now, if you are using pandas for machine learning works, this approach is little bit different to understand initially. In pandas, we are using general data frame types, but this library uses something unique that is called S-Frame. So S-Frame is abbreviated as scalable data frame. Compared to general data frame, S-Frame is not constrained by memory size and it is mutable and it has access to read multiple data sources like CSV file, text file, JSON file, etc. And one more advantage is S-Frame data type can be easily converted into pandas data frame with simple steps. So I will show you how to convert that in the end of this video. Okay. So next step, we are going to install the library. So type pip install Turi create to install the library. Once you install the library, you need to get some, you need to get the data sources. For this video, I took two data files that are movies.csv and ratings.csv. I will upload these files in my telegram page so it will be easy for you to access the data files from there. Now import the Turi create library and then create a variable called actions. So this variable is used to read the ratings.csv file. So please note down the syntaxes of S-Frame because if you are familiar with pandas, then it is a little bit different for you to understand the S-Frame approaches. 
so this thing i already said so please note down the syntaxes of s frame okay so now type actions it is used to get how the data is presented in the file so look at this we have four columns first column is user id and it contains numbers which represents the users the logic here is there is a chance we can expect like single user can able to watch multiple films for example take a look at the user id column here the user id 1 watched 10 different films so this is what i am saying and the second column is movie id it gets some numbers it represents each and every movie in the database and the third one is ratings it gives you knowledge like how much users liked the movies okay and finally timestamps that will show you how much amount of time the user spent on the particular movie so this is the data we have so with this data i'm going to perform the collaborative filtering recommendation okay so now we have to remove some columns like timestamps for collaborative filtering recommendation we don't need timestamps so here i wrote some common steps which is similar to pandas that will help you to remove the columns that you don't want after that we have to rename the columns it is one of the major thing in this library and it is considered as a disadvantage for me the major disadvantage of to recreate library is we have to rename every column to user id and item id format so i don't know why they are created like this it is kind of disadvantage to me so because if you are working on a particular data set that contains different columns so each time you have to change the column name to the particular format so this looks like kind of disadvantage to me so let's move to the next step create a variable model and type tc dot item similarity recommended dot create and in this method pass the renamed column so this is a syntax for creating recommender based on item similarity so once you click the run button it will execute the data and it will and it will apply the item based recommender algorithm into the data columns now our model is initiated and it is starting to apply the algorithms into the data columns so look at the description here it ignored the column ratings so basically in item based recommender it will take only the user id and movie id if any columns are existed other than these two it will automatically ignore the columns but if you want to add some extra parameter to our model then you can create a parameter like target it is a predefined parameter using this target parameter you can add extra columns for training but for collaborative filtering you don't need this parameter just user id and movie id is enough for us to recommend the movies now our model is ready let's try to recommend some movies for users so create a variable results and type model dot recommend and in this method you have to declare one parameter called users in this users parameter you have to select the existing user id for example here i selected user id 1 so i want 15 recommendation from this model so for defining the recommendation counts you have to declare another parameter which is called k so this is the correct syntax for getting the recommendation so before showing the recommendations to you you need to understand the important mathematics behind this code here we declared the item based recommender this is nothing but a formula or a derivation which is highly used in statistics the formula name is jacket similarity and the equation of the formula is a intersection b it is divided by a union b here a and b are two different sets just compare this equation with our model a is our user id and b is our movie id the concept is we are feeding the data into the jacquard equation and it is simply recommending the things based on the similar items between all the users so this is the mathematical concept behind this algorithm and if you want to understand this jacquard similarity then you can visit wikipedia it is a wonderful source for understanding the jacquard similarity by the way there is nothing to understand this formula it's an extremely easy one to understand and if you followed above explanation of mine then it is easy for you to implement the jacquard jacquard similarity equation on any data set so that's all about the mathematical theory behind this code so let's move to the next step so next step is we have to print the results variable to know the recommendations so look at this it recommending some of the movies for user id 1 based on collaborative filtering and it also shows the rank which is based on the accuracy of this model i already told you we have two data sets the second one contains the movie names so let's find out what are the movies that are recommended here
This movie is recommended for the user ID one. And one more thing I forgot to explain. Here we put the existing user ID record in the database. But if you want to generate a recommendation for non-existing user ID, it is possible in this algorithm to recommend new movies to non-existing user. So this is the prime advantage of Turi Create Library. So that's all about this video. If you like this video, give a like and subscribe and share for more interesting machine learning problems and the deep learning problems in Python. So thanks for watching and thank you. See you on next week.